everybody, I'm Jordan Rolfes from Beagle Rampant Productions, and if you guys watched our travel profile series on Morocco, you may have noticed that I promised a series on video gaming, and I am never one to break a promise. Except, of course, for the promises that I like to break. But anyway, you may have noticed that in my travel profile I talk about how much I love Morocco, and how it was really one of the best experiences that I've ever had in my life. So, naturally, for my video gaming series, I figured, well, I should still talk about something I feel really passionately about. Problem is, instead of loving this first game we're going to be talking about, I really hate it. It's not good. So let's dive right in, and then you'll want to dive right back out, I'm sure. <laughs> The first game we are going to look at in our Beagle Rampant video gaming series is probably my least favorite game that I've ever played. Dash Galaxy in the Alien Asylum, released on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1989. Now, I'll admit, with a title like Dash Galaxy in the Alien Asylum, it sounds pretty promising. When I hear the word Alien Asylum, I expect to see tentacles being intertwined. I expect to see four-eyed and six-tongued monsters pining for an unrequited love. I expect to see E.T. making out with a cheese grater. And when I looked at the back of the box description from MobyGames.com, I had good reason to still believe that I would see some of this stuff. It reads, Your Dash Galaxy, Interplanetary Superhero. You've fought your way out of tight spots a hundred times in a dozen solar systems, but you haven't seen tight till you accidentally land in the mental ward of the universe, the Alien Asylum. When I first bought this, that sounded pretty promising. And then, of course, you scroll down on the back of the box, because... Let's be real, if you buy an NES game nowadays, you're looking up the back of the box on MobyGames.com. If you scroll down a little bit further, it says it was produced by Data East. Yes, that Data East that produced the RoboCop series for the NES and Bad Dudes. Yeesh. But, further down, we see that this game was produced by Beam Software. This could legitimately be a toss-up. Beam Software was an Australian firm that was founded sort of in the early 1980s. They went through some company name changes, and ultimately they were bought out by Infogrames? I have no idea why there's an R in that company name, but whatever, in the late 1990s. Beam Software was known for producing such titles as the Mech Warrior game for the SNES. But they also did something good, Super Smash TV for the SNES, so I figure this game could be a bit of a toss-up. But no, it's pretty terrible, and let me show you why this game is terrible. When I insert the game, this bland title screen with no actual title theme comes on, and after a long, long wait, expecting, you know, something of a story, you get one if you wait for a while on the title screen in games like Zelda and Metroid, so maybe I can get something of an interesting story here. Well, I wait around and I wait around, and after what seems to be almost an entire minute, we get a demo. But I don't really realize it's a demo. I think I accidentally pressed the start button, which, no, I didn't because I'm not controlling this. And even if I were controlling this, surely I wouldn't have the character go that slowly. I mean, I would do it a little bit quicker. I mean, I'm no expert in video gaming, but I'm not terrible. I wouldn't go that pathetically slowly. I go ahead and I press start for real, and I notice 
he's going into a rocket, like in the demo scene. Well, that's interesting. Let me uh, bust out my compendium of instruction manuals here. Let's see. Okay, so the instruction booklet says, Your mission, to make your way through the incredible maze of rocket rooms and elevator shafts and return safely to your ship. Wait a minute. I thought we were in an insane asylum. So, really, I'm just escaping from a planet? Or am I wandering through an alien asylum? The back of the box and the instruction manual say two entirely different things here. I guess our objective now is to move through the maze of rocket shafts and rooms inside the rocket ship. Okay, I guess I could be down with that. Well, the gameplay is actually quite terrible. In the elevator shafts, you have to move a series of blocks to enter these... rooms? And there's no real discernible point to the rooms aside from getting keys, which you use to unlock the force fields, because that's how force fields work. You just take the key and... There is no real reason to go into the rooms, though, if you notice that your particular shaft floor doesn't have any force fields. There are floors you can entirely skip in this game. The combat is absolutely atrocious. Your weapon is a bomb, and if you're lucky, you can get a detonator to control when you set it off. If you don't have the detonator and you set off a bomb, you have three seconds to move to a safe distance. The problem is, nobody really knows what a safe distance is. It's really a matter of trial and error to figure out what's an actual legal distance to be away from this bomb. Dash Galaxy moves so slowly, it's like controlling a hippopotamus getting a colonoscopy. There's no discernible way to determine how much momentum you're actually building up. And once you do make a jump, you have no idea whether or not it's going to be a short little jump, or a big long jump that's about as easy to control as Franklin Delano Roosevelt going to a techno rave. Your health bar doubles as your time bar in this game, and that is the little oxygen bar down here at the bottom. The oxygen bar gradually ticks away when you go through the game, and anytime you take damage, you'll notice you lose actually quite a bit of oxygen. You can press the select button to deplete your oxygen and reset the room if you mess up one of the puzzles, and really you'll only need to do this in the elevator shafts. You may find yourself having to do this in some of the later rooms? Still don't even know what we're actually calling that. but. The oxygen meter, when you complete a room and go back to the shaft, it depletes. Now I realize a lot of games give you a bonus if you have remaining time. I'm okay with that, but I'm not okay with the logic problem here of you go to a different room and you completely lose oxygen. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Every time I go to a different room, I don't die from oxygen deprivation. So why on earth should one of the supposed best heroes in the galaxy do it? The graphics are absolutely poor. No, they get no better. This Atari-looking monstrosity is what you get. There is no hope of improvement here. And the character himself just looks angry and impatient all the time when he stands at rest. Forget any hope of a rest animation. That simply does not happen in this game. But when Dash Galaxy just stands there, he looks like that guy who's behind you at Disney World yelling, Take the picture when you're there meeting Alice in Wonderland at the Food and Wine Festival at Epcot, and you're trying to have a nice moment with one of your favorite Disney characters, and this jerk behind you just keeps screaming to take the picture, You impatient fool, Dash Galaxy, I hate you. Okay, actually, that time I think I was talking about an actual jerk that I met, but I'm sure Dash Galaxy would do a thing like that. And let's take a look at Dash Galaxy's clothing. Are we in an alien asylum, or are we trying to escape on a rocket? This looks like something you would give to a patient in a mental asylum, but it seems like he's trying to make his way through a rocket ship. I have no idea what's going on and why he's wearing something that terrible looking. 
If I do have one good thing to say about this game, it would be that I like the music. It was done by Australian composer Tanya Smith, who is best known for her work in a group called Space Junkie. Space Junkie consists of band members from all over the world, and anytime one of them has to travel to a distant location, they're still able to collaborate and come up with some pretty amazing stuff. It's a very interesting band, and I like what she does in Dash Galaxy here. But, of course, the problem is, there seem to only be three different songs that I can count, and they only go on for about 30 seconds. It's like they figured, okay, Tanya, you're doing something good here, so can we kind of stop that and make it short and only do three songs? No more. So this is my first gaming video on my channel, and... I feel like I kind of owe you guys the ending to this game, but... I mean, we've seen how slowly Dash Galaxy moves, and if I keep up at this rate, chances are I will literally be dead by the time we get this finished. So, luckily I found on the internet that if you press the ever-comfortable combination of up, left, A, B, and select at the title screen, you can pick your starting point. Oh. There were only nine choices here. Um, but I saw in the back of the box there are at least 13 floors, and I actually read on the internet that there were 24 floors. Oh. So this game doesn't have a password or a save feature. I mean, I know a save feature would be a lot to ask for this game, but... You couldn't even do a password? A short, simple password for something like this? For a character that moves so unimaginably slowly? Well, I guess it's Game Genie time. <sighs> it feels so wrong to take out an actually good game. So what? Yeah, I had to stick Dash Galaxy in a Game Genie, and I had to stick the Game Genie in a NES Famicom converter cartridge. I know it looks weird, don't judge me, you know. Do I go to your house and judge your weird and unnatural fascination with Lawrence Welk? Thought so. Even with the Game Genie, I can only find codes to start myself out at level 20. Well, if I do level 20 in infinite keys, I should still be able to breeze through this game, right? Well, apparently all of the elevators to get you to the next floors seem to be locked off at this point in the game. The problem is, at this late stage in the game, you do get to see some pretty cool looking monsters, but you really don't care by this late stage in the game, and you still can't really fight them. It's like going to the Civil War using only an army of Magikarps. You just wouldn't do it. One cute little feature in this later part of the game are these little platforms that are almost impossible to actually board. It's way too easy to lose your footing and slip. And once you're on them, I mean, I guess they're okay enough to control, but... I've played other games with a feature like this, and definitely they're a lot smoother in those other projects, but, you know, heck, you gotta give Dash Galaxy a few pity points, I guess. Now, it's really a matter of finding these bizarre question marks. What, I, am I expecting the Riddler to just magically pop on out of here? <laughs> Once you hit the question mark, a random door appears. Hopefully that's the door to the credits. No. No. Oh god, no. Please. Please don't take me down. No. Please. Please. I, 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 I am a good person. I, I, you see, I do volunteer work and stuff. Please, please, don't, don't make me go through this again. I don't want to go down. Please. Nothing but down. Oh, please. No. No. Oh god. I'm finally able to get to level 24 and stumble my way and find the actual door to the credits. Yay!
so that is Dash Galaxy for the Nintendo Entertainment System, one of the worst games that I have ever played in my entire life. And there's no reason why it should be. With the title, they give themselves an opportunity to really explore some strange and twisted things. And they kind of do that maybe a little bit in the later levels, but they don't do it in any of the other levels. So by the introduction, you really stop caring. There's no actual way to combat anyone because you use these stupid little bombs that you have no control over. The platforming is just an unholy mess, and there's a puzzle element which they could have ran with, but they decided not to. They decided to rip off a platforming genre, and they don't rip it off all of that well. This game is just a mess. It's an unholy mess, and... It's a shame, because there's so much that a creative person could have done with this. And I think the team at Beam Software probably was really creative. They just needed maybe a quick cash cow? I don't know. They had a lot of other projects going on, and maybe this one really was just a quickie. Kind of like my entire YouTube channel. But... I don't know. It's just an absolute catastrophe, and it doesn't culminate well. Have any of you guys ever played Dash Galaxy? Let me know in the comments section. Or is there something I'm missing? Am I overlooking and misjudging this game? Is this actually an absolute masterpiece? And am I just too stupid to figure it out? I mean, I'll be the first to admit, I'm no genius here. But um, I can't imagine anybody liking this. Or am I going to run into the Dash Galaxy superfan who says, Why do you besmirch the good name of Dash Galaxy? Don't you know I have Dash Galaxy tattooed in my unmentionable portions? Stranger things have happened, but... For Beagle Rampant Productions, I'm Jordan Rolfus. Thank you so much for supporting me and liking, commenting, subscribing, and following me. You guys have been great and really patient with me, and... Please be nice to me in the comments, you know. I, I, I know what I'm working with here, you know. This this used to be a money maker, but, you know, this time and Pringles happen to us. I'm getting off topic now, so I should just stop recording while I'm ahead. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Jordan Rolfus. I'll catch you next time with whatever project it is I'm going to do. Thank you guys once again. Bye-bye.